Hey everyone, it's Mobius Y here, and I am going to go over update 1.10 with you. It's a little overdue, update 1.10 was two weeks ago, so I do apologize for that. So I'm just going to go over how you get into the tra team training and tank practice modes really quickly, and then I'm going to give you a brief summary of the patch notes. So starting off, to get into the different game modes here, as you would normally get into a platoon, when you're sitting in your garage, you simply hit the back button. That doesn't just give you the option to invite people to your platoon, it also gives you the team training and tank practice battle mode option. So with team training, you simply highlight team training, you press the A button, and then it takes you back to your garage where you pick the tank you want to use for team training. As soon as you pick your tank, you go to the game room queue where you can see the gamer tags of other people with a game available and it shows you what map they're playing, how many players in their lobby, and the time limit that they've got on their game. Now, for those of you with a premium account, you can hit the X button to create a room and it takes you to this screen where you select the map you want and it's got all the different variations of each map and once you choose the map you want, you can go change the duration of the match as well as the room options, whether you have it public for anybody to join or whether it's private where you have to invite people to join instead. Well, as soon as you create the lobby there with the settings you want, such as province encounter for a 15 minute battle, it takes you to this screen here where you, you have a list of the players on each team, on the quote unquote green and red teams here. And you, if you are the creator of the room, you can highlight their name and press the A button to swap them on their team. So you'll essentially see everybody in the lobby and which tank they're using and which tier their tank is using. Now to get out of team training mode, you simply have to go back to your garage and hit the B button and it will ask you if you want wish to leave the current game mode. So that's how you get into team training. Now with tank practice, same thing, hit the back button, select tank practice, and then you choose the tank you want to use for tank practice. For tank practice, there's three different modes. There's driving practice, target practice, and live fire practice. So starting with driving practice, you simply choose the dri driving practice option. After you've selected your tank, it'll take you to province. Now there's a few enemies that are scattered about our province. They're all tier 1 enemies. There's only 7 of them. But the idea here is driving. So you essentially go through these goals that are littered throughout the map. And you can continue on until you finish. Or you could just drive off the cliff and fail with the object 140 like I just did there. So that's essentially driving practice. You go all over province that way. Similar thing with target practice, except instead of driving through goals, you're driving to the next target to destroy them. And in target practice, these enemies do not shoot back at you, so you just get to drive around, shoot them, kill them at your leisure, and they just sit there and take it like good little dummies. So with target practice, you see enemies tiers 1 through 10, starting with, uh, I forget what it was, a T1 Company Ham or something, and you go all the way to... For example, in an AMX 5120 and finally an STB-1 for the Tier 10. So you just put shots in them. They just drive around on set paths. They completely ignore you. And you just keep going until you destroy them all. So that's target practice. Now with live fire practice, it takes you to Malinovka instead of province here. And in this instance, you're facing off against enemies rank rated from Tiers 1 to run through 10 in consecutive order. You start with the Tier 1. And you just take them out one by one. So, for example, the Tier 1 is an MS-1, the Tier 2 is a T-7 Artillery, so on and so forth, and these enemies will shoot back at you. So, it can be a little bit daunting at first, but it's not its not too, too bad. The tanks are essentially all stock with untrained crews and no consumables or equipment on them, so to speak. So, you can essentially outspot them and outmaneuver them if you use a tank with a well-trained crew. Or you can just have fun, challenge yourself, see the lowest tier tank you can use to get through this, or what have you. But all in all, all three of these game modes are good ways to test out a new tank for you without having to jump into a random battle and possibly an untrained crew to figure out how it, how it kind of works for you. So that's basically how those go on. So with those three game modes, uh, you can spend as much time as you want in them, although consumables do cost silver to resupply. I believe ammo is free, if I remember again correctly. I'm not 100% on that. Uh, I, I'm quite certain, though, that it said that consumables were at no cost, but and ammo, or sorry, consumables still cost silver, but ammo and repairs were free. 
So you can do those as much as you want. So from those game modes, I'm going to now jump into the patch notes here. And I'm not going to spend too much time with them because the last recording I did getting these patch notes where I went through them very descriptively and explained what, it, what each set meant, it, yeah, I'm not kidding, it was two hours. So I want to get through this fairly quickly. So if I, if I get to a point where you would like to just stop and actually read through it you're on your own time, just hit that pause button and skim through it at, at your own leisure. And as I would simply just be giving a simple overview of what's going on with each screen. So with the patch notes, they start with map updates and balance. They change some artillery spawning on airfield, airfield war cliff in Erlenberg. Spawn points were adjusted for balance on Highway, Pearl, Weir, Pearl River, and Wild Park. Flag and spawn points were moved for balance on Enxquar, Karelia, Kamarin, and Westfield. There are also new encounter layouts for Himmelsdorf Knight, Prokhorovka Knight, Province Knight, and Westfield, the regular version, not the rain version. There are also various assets and art changes, and art fixes, sorry, to Arctic Region, Fishing Bay War, uh, Fisherman's Bay War, sorry, Westfield, White Park, and Seed Freegline, fixing some issues where in some edges on the map a player could get stuck if they were trying to, so several fixes there. Now, starting into some major, major vehicle changes, they give a long list of vehicle models that were updated, as well as a couple tanks that were renamed. The Stug 3 is now the Stug 3 Ost G, and the T-49 is the T-67 now. So, vehicle models that were, that were updated, Panzer II, Panz, uh, the Panther, the Tiger I, the Mouse, the Stug 3, Jet, the Yog Panther, the Ferdinand, the Centurion 71, Churchill 1, Conqueror, Tortoise, the Chaffee, the M3 Lee, the Sherman tank, the Pershing, the M103, the Hellcat, the T95, the Russian T34, T3485, KV-1S, IS, IS-7, SU-100 TD, ISU-152, and Object 704 TDs as well. Those all simply got vehicle model updates. So, for the full update notes goes into much more detail, starting with some changes to the user interface. The user interface they mostly fixed some issues for example, bug fix options, gamma disappears after selecting safe zone calibration. That was fixed. The tank selector, tank stats, and ops pane is now hidden while selecting tank filters. Pop-ups from the Xbox dashboard no longer cause the score screen to disappear. Things like that. Nothing major going on there. Feel free to read through the rest of those at your leisure. Some gameplay changes. AFK deterrent players will no longer earn any XP if they leave a game early while still alive, which is great. They updated some various visual effects, such as shockwave, as well as artillery shells hitting the ground. Uh, they also fixed a couple issues. For example, the next battle functionality would sometimes cause achievements related to kill tracking not to be awarded correctly, as well as fixed an issue where team kills could count towards the completion of achievements, so on and so forth. So mostly bug issues, as well as a couple changes here. Battle hero medals can now be awarded to multiple eligible players in a match and do not tie break based on highest XP earned. So you could have multiple people earn something like a top gun, I suppose. If two people had six kills out of the whole team, they could both get a top gun is essentially what that means. <clears throat> so moving on from those, skim through those at your leisure. Changes to the HUD. The Japanese consumable onigiri shows up with the proper background in the HUD. Uh, they updated a death tip when you die from fire. There were some package corrections for the T-18, the Pershing, and the T-29. The reload timer no longer appears once you're out of ammo. And they also fixed an issue where out-of-range tanks would have their icon flash on screen. That one was pretty annoying. I'm glad that's fixed. A couple of changes to audio. Range sounds should now properly cover the entire map on rain maps. And they fixed an incorrect audio cue when switching from a destroyed player to an active player while you are in the post in the post-mortem camera screen. A couple localization fixes. Mostly just fixing things for non-English uh, languages there. So a couple of fixes in that section there. So now this is the nitty-gritty vehicle changes. This is what everybody's looking for, and this is what everybody complains about. Oh my god, they nerfed my tank! I assure you, there are very few nerfs <laughs> going on here with the vehicle changes. And the few that were done... Uh, one in particular was actually quite necessary. So France, all of their light tanks essentially just got health increased, uh, health buffs. The ELC, the 12T, the 1375, and the 1390, they all got health buffs. That's essentially all that happened there. Uh, moving on to French uh, tank destroyers, ARL V39 got a front armor increase, and the 
AMX AC46 had a name change on the mod on one of the modules for its package. Now with the artillery, the, the French artillery, nothing really happened here. Uh, there were merely some radio module changes on various packages of the artillery, such as AMX 105-47, AMX 13-F3, the Lorraine, the Lorraine 50, the Lorraine 51. Just radio changes there, nothing major. That was pretty much all that was there. So jumping into light tanks for Germany, the Panzer I got an armor increase on its chassis on all sides, and all, as well as the 2cm Breda gun got some faster rate of fire as well as accuracy buffs. Uh, from, from movement and between shots as well. The Panzer II tank model got updated. The VK-16 Leopard health buffs there. The VK-2801 uh, had a forward speed limit increase as well as a health buff and terrain resistance buffs as well. When it says something like firm terrain resistance decreased, it's kind of like golf with terrain resistances. The lower the number, the better it is. Just like with accuracy, the lower the number, the better the accuracy. So when it says something such as dispersion radius decreased or terrain resistance decreased, it means that though the accuracy was buffed or the terrain resistances were buffed so that the tank has better maneuverability. And the Awful Panther also got a health boost and the 7.5 centimeter L58 gun got a rate of fire buff as well. So it's a much more competitive light tank. So jumping into German medium tanks. The Panzer IV Hydro, it's a German premium tank. The 7.5 centimeter L48 gun got a fire rate increase as well. The Panzer V IV had a health buff, which is surprising considering the Panzer V IV is a uh, borderline OP as it is. The Panther M10 7.5 centimeter L70 gun just got a name change, nothing significant. The Panther tank, the aftershot accuracy so the accuracy maintained between shots with the 7.5 l100 gun uh, maintains better accuracy between shots as well as the model was updated the engineering panzer the nine centimeter clock 54 got a rate of fire buff as well as an uh, aiming time buff similar thing here with uh, dispersion factor and terrain resistance being decreased when it says aiming time decreased that means it was made better it aims it fully aims in faster is essentially what that means. Now there's a lot of changes here to the E50 and I could sum them all up with or just about all of them up with saying accuracy buffs on pretty much every single gun as well as rate of fire buffs on pretty much every single gun. That's basically what that is there with the E50 as well as overall chassis buffs with movement and rotation accuracy uh, soft stats movement dispersion factor and rotation dispersion factor decreases with all E50 chassis, and like I said, all of the guns got reload time, aiming time decreased, rate of fire increased, turret rotation dispersion factor decreased, after aftershot dispersion factor decreased, all sorts of buffs to the E50 here, so it should be a much more fun and competitive tank to play at tier 9. And lastly, for the German mediums, Leopard Prototype Alpha, the 9 centimeter Quark 54, aiming time was decreased, so it aims in faster, and the 105 gun on both types of turret, the L7A1, basically got rate of fire buffs across the board with the 10.5 centimeter for the Leopard Prototype A. So, moving on to German heavy tanks, VK3601 repair cost decreased. Sorry, VK3601H. So it's cheaper to fully repair, repair it. Now, the Tiger tank, forward speed limit, backward speed limit, both increased. Uh, rotation speed increases on both chassis types as well as one of the turrets got a traverse speed increase and the tank model was updated as well. The tier 8 premium Lerva heavy tank 10.5 centimeter L70 gun uh, now has now carries more ammunition in the Lerva. Moving on to the German Tiger 2 forward speed limit increased as well as rotation speed movement dispersion factor and rotation dispersion factor buffs on both chassis types the rotation speed was decreased on the Porsche term turret though, as well as a couple changes to some of the guns, mostly buffs here. The aiming time was made better as well as the aftershot and turret rotation dispersion factors were made better as well, and the max ammo was increased on the turrets as well. Now the Henschel term hull actually had a rotation speed increase as opposed to the Porsche term uh, turret. Sorry. So that, that's pretty much it for the Tiger II. Feel free to go through those more thoroughly. Uh, VK4502 OSB 
got a front armor buff, so it's a much stronger heavy tank as well. So that's pretty cool there. And the mouse had a tank model update as well. German TD is the Martyr II. Uh, the shells used on the 7.6 packs, pack 36, uh, they just had caliber increases. I'm not going to lie, I really don't quite know what that means. Um, I'm afraid I can't go any further into that because I straight up just don't understand what a caliber increase exactly changes. So the Stug 3 was renamed to the Stug 3 Ops G, and the tank model was updated. Now the Martyr 38T, same thing with the Martyr 2, 7.6 centimeter pack 36 guns. The caliber was increased for the three different shell types. The Yog Panzer 4, 10.5 centimeter gun, uh, what, had an ammo increase. The E25 had a name change uh, for its turret, as well as the 10.5 centimeter L70 gun had a name change in the packages as well. The Yog Panther tank model had an update. The Yog Panther 2 had a forward speed limit buff. The Ferdinand tank model was updated. The Borsig, here's one that got hit with the nerf bat a bit. The reload time and fire rate were both reduced, so basically it shoots slower now. The Borsig, which is fine because it's a really good TD anyways, so a slower rate of fire should help balance it out a little bit better. The Yog Panzer E100 simply had a turret name change, nothing significant there. The Waffle E100 had accuracy nerfs here, movement dispersion factor increased, rotation dispersion factor increased, turret rotation dispersion factor increased, turret rotation dispersion factor increased for the 15 centimeter as well. So both guns basically have worse accuracy on the move, and the chassis essentially gives you worse accuracy while rotating and moving as well. German artillery, uh, name changes for the GW Tiger P, for the, for the turret, the 21 centimeter gun though had an accuracy buff. The 21, that's the 21 centimeter MRS 18 slash 1 gun on the GW Tiger P German artillery. Overall accuracy buff. The Get Wet 100, uh, the turret had a name change, nothing significant there. So that's it for the German tanks. Moving on to UK tanks. Getting through these a lot quicker than last time, I'll tell you that much. So starting with UK light tanks, Cruiser Mark 1 had armor increases, armor buffs all around it. Pretty cool. The Cruiser Mark 3 uh, had some penetration buffs with the 50mm Bessa gun on both turrets, both the Cruiser Mark 3 and Cruiser Mark 3 Star. Uh, close range penetration buffs and some radio changes for some of the Cruiser Mark 3 packages. Cruiser Mark 4, some radio changes again on some of the packages. And the Cruiser Mark II, again, some radio changes from some of the packages. Nothing significant there. Moving on to medium tanks for the UK. Vickers Medium Mark I, 50mm Bessic gun. Uh, close range penetration power was increased on both turrets for the Vickers Medium Mark I. Vickers Medium Mark II had, again, armor buffs on all sides of it, front side and back. And the turret armor on the Vickers Media Mark II, uh, both different types of turret, the Mark II Star, the Mark II Double Star, front side and back armor increased on both those turrets. The Centurion Mark 7 one had a tank model update and essentially kind of nerfed the armor on the Centurion Mark 7 one The um, the hull armor it was buffed a little bit, but not really anything super significant, and the turret armor was nerfed a fair bit, so it's a lot easier to pen the Centurion Mark 7 ones turret from the front. That mountain light can still cause nasty gun, uh, shell bounces, sorry. It's still pretty protective, but just it's just not as good as it used to be. There was a lot of butthurt over that. Frankly, it doesn't affect me too much. Seeing as how I sold that tank, I just got sick of it. I didn't like it anyways. But it's still, it's, it's still a decent tank with, that has really good guns for its tier. And the FV4202 got the much needed rate of fire buff uh, on its 105 millimeter gun to make it much more competitive with the other tier 10s. So this tank is easily no not no, no longer um, the worst tier 10 medium anymore, simply because it has better DPM now, which is a pretty pretty cool buff there. Heavy tanks, uh, the Churchill one and the Conqueror had their tank models updated. The Churchill gun carrier had front and side armor buffs. The AT-15A had a health buff as well as the turret had a health buff too, and their, 
the max battle level was decreased, so essentially the AT-15A now has preferential matchmaking like most of the other premium tanks of that tier, so it should only see up to tier 8. The Tortoise also had a vehicle model update. The Sexton 2 was changed to just the Sexton for U uh, United Kingdom artillery, and the Birch Gun had a turret name change and a gun and a change in the gun as well, so nothing significant there. Couple changes to the UK tanks. Most of the most of their mediums got buffed, which is pretty cool. Moving on to the US tanks, lots of changes in here. Starting with their light tanks, the M2 light tank had close range uh, penetration buffs with the 50 caliber machine gun M2. The T7 combat car had uh, speed limit increases, both forward and backward. Also got a max ammo. Uh, increase the clip rate was increased, the fire rate was increased, and the short range penetration with the 50 caliber MG M2 was also buffed, just like on the M2 light. The M22 Locust simply had uh, the a name change for the 37 millimeter L53 gun. Nothing major there. The M5 Stewart, there was a lot of changes to the M5 Stewart. Uh, had a its weight was increased, health was increased, forward speed limit increased. The camo values for moving for moving and sitting still were decreased, so a little easier to detect the M5 Stewart now, as well as terrain resistance buffs and rotation buffs for various M5 Stewart chassis. Also, uh, lots of the M5 Stewart's turrets had armor buffs to the front side and rear, as well as vision radius buffs for pretty much every single turret. Uh, the 75mm howitzer was removed from the M M5 Stewart, though, so you no longer have that nice derp gun on the M5 Stewart. It was fun to play, and the tank model was updated as well. There were also some research and price cost increases for the M5 Stewart's packages, so lots of changes there on the M5 Stewart. Feel free to pause and peruse those more in depth at your own leisure. And I'm going to move on to the M24 Chaffee, which also had several several changes here. Very similar to the M5 Stewart, um, except quite a few more buffs here. It got some armor buffs on all, all three sides, front side and rear, as well as its camo factors when moving and sitting still were increased, so it's harder to detect now. The terrain resistances were increased on the chassis, as well as the turret armor uh, got an overall buff front side and rear. The 75mm guns had uh, rate of fire rate of fire increases as well and better slightly better accuracy and uh, the tank model was updated as well as the turret model was updated it no longer has that funky looking turret model that the lunar tank had uh, you don't get that turret anymore if I remember correctly so quite a few changes to the M24 Chaffee there feel free to peruse those on your own time the T21 had health buffs uh, on both types of chassis. The T71 had health buffs as well. The 76 millimeter gun, uh, its price was increased as well as its uh, tier rating, I guess, was increased as well. And uh, a couple package increases to the T71. So nothing super significant so far. Uh, major changes to the M5 Stewart and the M24 Chaffee, though. So. Uh, U.S. medium tanks, M3 Lee, front armor decreased, side and back armor increased, and the tank model updated. So a slight reduction in the frontal armor, but better side and rear armor on the M3 Lee. M4 Sherman, front armor decreased, but side and back armor increased a little bit. The turret, one of the turrets had its side and rear armor reduced. So a couple nerfs there. Excuse me, starting to get the hiccups. Now the 105mm derp gun had its uh, reload time increased and fire rate decreased so it shoots a little so it shoots quite a bit slower uh, the turret armor though uh, for the d51072 turret had armor buffs on all three sides front side and rear uh, and the 76 millimeter gun on the d51072 turret rotation dispersion factor increased so slightly worse uh, accuracy when rotating the turret, as well as the tank model was updated there. Now the Sherman Fury, this is a tier 6 premium tank, basically an easy 8. Uh, had health, health cost increases, the repair cost was decreased, and it also had the turret rotation spe speed increased, terrain resistances were buffed, 
and the brake force was decreased. Uh, now, if I recall correctly, when brake force is increased, that makes it better. It makes it it's quicker to stop, and if it's and the brake force is decreased, it's harder to stop from going full speed ahead. So, moving on to the T23, the brake force was decreased there, so it's harder to stop. Uh, dispersion radius decreased, reload time and aiming t reload time increased, fire rate decreased, so fa it shoots even faster again now. Or sorry, I'm reading this wrong. I'm reading it backwards, my bad. The rate of fire was nerfed a bit on the T23. The aiming time was made better though, as well as the overall accuracy was made better, and the overall accuracy when rotating the turret and between shots was made better on the T23 Tier 7 Premium Tank as well. M26 Pershing. Uh, one of the guns was changed in the packages from the 76mm M1A1 to the 76mm M1A2. Uh, one of the package prices was increased. I believe the M26 Pershing itself was, had a price increase and the tank model was updated. Now both the T26 E4 Super Pershing and the Super Pershing Freedom, they both had a health buffs by 10 points. They now have 1460 health instead of, four, instead of 1450. The T69 gun, 76mm gun, uh, had a tier rating increase as well as a price increase and a couple other package price increases there on the T69 medium tank. Now, US heavy tanks, a few changes here. The M103 Front side and back armor changes. The front and back armor were increased. The side armor was decreased. Now the M89 turret, front armor and back armor increased, but the side armor was decreased. And the T140 turret, the front and back armor was increased, and the T and the side armor was decreased yet again. And this tank also got a, its tank model updated. T57 heavy tank. The aiming time was increased with the 120mm gun and his turret rotation dispersion factor was increased as well. So worse aiming time and worse accuracy when rotating the turret. Another fairly necessary nerf, but nothing too significant, just to make the gun handling a little bit worse on that tank. So moving on to the US TDs, starting with the T-18. The 75mm howitzer on the T-18 had its rate of fire reduced, got hit with a nerf bat there and worse turret rotation accuracy as well with the 75mm howitzer. The quick firing 2 pounder Mark 9, all similar thing there, reload time increased, fire rate decreased, so it shoots slower now, and the turret rotation dispersion factor increased as well. So both the 75mm howitzer and the quick firing 2 pounder both have longer, both have uh, less DPM, slower, slower shots, uh, they shoot more slowly as well as worse accuracy when turning the the turret, quote unquote turret. Uh, T49, aka the T67. Uh, the T49 was renamed to the T67, as we already know. The T42 turret replaced with T49, and the T49 turret replaced with T67. M18 Hellcat had armor decreased on all sides. The chassis M18 T67 movement dispersion factor and rotation dispersion factor both increased, so a little bit worse accuracy when moving the chassis. The T69 chassis as well, similar, same thing, movement and rotation dispersion factor increases. Uh, one of the turrets, the M18M34A1 front armor increased, but sided rear armor was decreased. Same thing with the M18M1 turret, uh, except all three sides had armor buffs there, front side and back armor increased. The 76mm M7L50 gun turret rotation dispersion factor increased. And the same can be said for the 76mm M1A1, 76mm M1A2, and 90mm M3 gun. They all had their turret rotation dispersion factor increased on all four of those guns. So a slightly worse accuracy when rotating the turret for the M18 Hellcat. And the tank model was updated as well. T95 also had a vehicle model update. US Artillery, the Sexton 1, the repair cost was decreased. M37 had a turret name change. The M41's 155mm howitzer had its turret rotation dispersion factor decreased, so it's got a little bit better accuracy when moving the when moving the, the gun, re-aiming the gun well, the M41 US artillery. Now the T92, a few buffs to the T92, uh, blah, blah, excuse me, a few buffs to the T92. The chassis had its movement and rotation dispersion factors decreased, so a little bit of accuracy when moving the T92 around, as well as its Terrain resistances were buffed as well, 
for medium and soft terrain resistances decreased. The T92 turret uh, name change as well. Sorry, the T92 had its turret turret's name changed from M12 M4 to T92, and the 240 millimeter howitzer also had its turret rotation dispersion factor decrease, so a little bit better accuracy when moving the T92 and when re-aiming with the T92 somewhere else with than just moving the gun. Now, USSR, aka Russia, starting with light tanks again, MT-25, health resistance increase, terrain resistance buffs on both t both chassis types. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Like I said, terrain resistance buffs on both t chassis types for the MT-25. One of the engines got changed in one of the packages. Uh, the that very package with the and both packages where the engines were changed, their prices are now increased as well. So Russian medium tanks, the T-34 and T-3485, had their tank models updated. The T-54, uh, its T-54 mod 1946 uh, turret, its side armor was increased, but its rear armor was decreased. So a couple changes there. Nothing too significant with those Russian lights and medium tanks. Heavy tanks. KV-1S, it's moving and still invisibility were both increased, so it should be a little more difficult to spot. Uh, the 76 mil ZIS-5 on the turret KV-1S mod 1942, the reload time decreased, fire rate increased, so that 76 mil should shoot faster now. The package KV-85 research was decreased as well. Uh, the credits factor was increased for the KV-1S. I believe that means it's easier to earn more credits with the KV-1S. And the tank model is updated as well. Now, the the IS 100mm uh, D10 gun, essentially it got a uh, rate of fire buff and some accuracy buffs on both turret types, on the IS-85 and IS-122. So that's the 100mm D10 gun on both, both turret types of the IS. Dispersion radius decreased, reload time decreased, aiming time decreased, fire rate increased, turret rotation dispersion factor decreased. Now the 122mm D25T and the 122mm D25T both had max, their maximum ammo increased and the IS's tank model was updated as well. IS-7's tank model was updated and that moves us on to Russian tank destroyers. Starting with the SU-100, its tank model was updated. The SU-100 M1 had its 100mm D10S mod 1944 gun. Basically it had a rate of fire buff. The ISU-152 got a vehicle model update. Again, SU-101, the 100mm D-54S, dispersion radius decreased, reload time and fire rate both buffed, so it's 100mm D-54S, the gun shoots faster, and it's a little bit more accurate now. SU-122-54, the Tier 9, the 100mm D-54S gun, dispersion radius decreased, and reload time and fire rate both buffed there, so again, made more accurate, and shoots a little bit more quickly. Same with the 122 M62 C2 on the SU-122-54. A little, little bit more accurate and shoots faster. So buffs to several of the Russian TDs down the Object 263 line. Object 704, the vehicle model was updated. Now that the Object 268 got hit with the nerf bat a bit here, its overall penetration power with the 152mm M64 gun, close piercing and far piercing power decreased. That's not too bad, seeing as how, by default, it had, what the heck was it, 303 penetration with a standard AP shell. But it's still really good, so nothing too, nothing too major there. And lastly, Russian artillery. The SU-14-1, one of its turrets had its name changed. And the SU-14-2, the 203mm how, uh, howitzer gun. Uh, dispersion radius decreased, so it got a bit of an accuracy buff there, the SU-14-2. Russian artillery. And that is essentially all of the patch notes there, folks. Again, I do apologize for zipping through those super quickly, but like I said, you can simply go back and just hit the pause button and read through them more descriptively on your own time. Like I said, I didn't want this video to be two freaking hours long. I literally was recording for about that time when I realized how long it was taking me to get through those patch notes. Like I said, lots of changes were done. A, a few tanks got hit with the nerf bat. But uh, most of those weren't too significant. The big significant changes were the E50 buffs, the changes to the M5 Stewart and the M24 Chaffee. Those were pretty significant. Uh, the IS got a couple buffs as well. The Tiger and Tiger 2, they both had a few buffs as well, aside from 
minor nerfs to the Tiger II's turret rotation accuracy. So, like I said, no, nothing totally frickin' game-breaking to make OP tanks even more OP or anything ridiculous like that. No tank was made even more useless than it was before. Nothing ridiculous went on like that. Me, personally, I'm pretty excited about the FE-4202 getting its much-needed rate-of-fire buff that the PC implemented quite some time ago. So that should make that tank much more competitive, and hopefully you'll be seeing more of the, that kind of medium tank in the top tiers of World of Tanks on the Xbox. So, thanks very much for your time. For If you sat through this, like I said, feel free to go through those uh, more in-depth on your own time. You could glean lots of information from doing so. And again, thank you very much for your patience and your time, uh, spending, spending your time here on my channel. And I hope to see you again soon. This is Mobius Y signing off. I will keep you up to date uh, with the next update. Hopefully we will see some Chinese tanks coming fairly soon here. And I will keep you informed of when that is happening. You guys have a great night. And I will see you soon. Hopefully I'll see you on the battlefield. Take care.